So, inshallah, with my talk today, I want to focus on one last word. Inshallah, to kind of wrap up uh, the series that I've been focusing on different words in their context, in their siyaq, and their istikhdam, and their usage in the Quran to highlight the linguistic perfection of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It just got louder, right? It's not just my ears. I know we got a lot of people here tonight, as, as we should. Uh, hopefully everybody's here to be seeking Laylatul Qadr, right? Um, but please, please, inshallah, respect for the speech of Allah and the speech of his Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. And so without further ado, the word that I want to focus on today is the word Jabal, which means mountain, right? and particularly in the singular form, right? As opposed to Jibal. So the word Jibal, mountains in the Quran is normally used to talk about the physical phenomenon related to mountains, their creation, their structure, and also on the day of judgment, what will happen to those mountains. Whereas the word Jabal in the singular form, which is only mentioned in five verses, right? Is used to talk about the supernatural phenomenon, right? The what? Supernatural phenomenon, right? And the first example of this is when Ibrahim alayhi salam, he asks his Lord, Arini kayfa tuhyil mawta. Show me how you are able to give life to the dead. And he asks Ibrahim, qala awalam tu'man, you don't believe? He says, of course I believe, but I would like for my heart to be completely satisfied. And so listen to what he tells Ibrahim Right, he says, okay, take four birds and tame them to your call and place on each jebel. Each mountain, a portion of the bird, and then call these birds, right, from each mountain, and they will come to you striving. Any of you ever seen this before? Right? Epic event of miraculous proportion, not something that we see every day. The second time Jebel is mentioned in the Quran is when Musa alayhi salam, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Arini anzur ilayk. Now allow me to see you. This is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually spoke to Musa directly. Now he's asking for more, right? So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wants him to show himself to Musa. Qala lan tarani, you will not be able to see me, right? Walakin indhur ilal jabal. Look over to al jabal, the mountain. Fa in istaqarra makanahu fa sofa tarani. If the mountain is able to stay in its place, then you will be able to see me. So when Allah revealed his splendor to the mountain, the mountain collapsed. وَخَرَّ Musa صَعِقَ And Musa, he also collapsed. Right? Out of this amazing event of epic proportion, not something that we see every single day. Right? The third mention of Jabal, is also in relation to Bani Israel. As, it, as Allah Ta'ala raised Al Jabal, the mountain above Bani Israel, and it was as if it was a dark gray cloud hanging above their heads. Right? And they thought, and they thought it was going to actually fall upon them. Right? I don't even want to imagine. Right, the sight of a mountain being hung above my head. Again, another event of epic proportion mentioned in relation to the word Jabal. The fourth scenario is the son of Musa alayhi salam. As he says, Qala sa'awi ila Jabal. I'm going to seek refuge at a mountain, Ya'asimuni min al ma, and this mountain is going to protect me from the flood. The son of Nuh, what did I say, Yusuf? Musa, the son of Nuh, alayhi salam, barakallahu feek, right? So he says that I'm going to seek refuge at a mountain and it is going to protect me from the flood. 
and obviously the event of epic proportion, the miraculous event is the flood, and also the Ark of Nuh salam, that is there passing by the mountain and was built in such a way that it was able to withstand such a flood that not even the mountains could withstand, right? And finally, the event of epic proportion, the supernatural event after which the mountain is no longer mentioned in the Quran is what? Law anzalna hadha al-Quran ala jabalin la ra'aytahu khashi'an mutasaddi'an min khashyatillah. Subhanallah. Look at the linguistic beauty and mastery of the Quran. Allah says, and if we were to reveal the Quran upon a jabal, upon a mountain, then you would have seen a crumbling and in fear and uh, humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Now, the Quran is not static eloquence, it is dynamic eloquence. Static eloquence is for the purpose of reverence and awe, so that we say, wow, and we're amazed by it. Right? No, the Quran is a perfect balance of substance and style. Right? And it is considered dynamic eloquence. Yes, we, re we revere it and we awe at it, but at the same time, we can take from it refinement and rectification. Right? So we find a common lesson as well in this linguistic phenomenon that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing respecting Allah ta'ala's power. Right? And accepting the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having no doubt about the ability of Allah. And this is why he said to Ibrahim alayhi salam, after he shows him his ability to revive the dead, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Know, have complete knowledge, which is above Iman. Right? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is mighty and he is wise. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said to Musa alayhi salam, after he came back conscious, he says, Ya Musa, inni stafaytuka ala nas. Oh Musa, I have preferred you over the people and I have chosen you bi risalati wa bi kalami with my message and also with my direct speech. So take what I have given you and be of those who are grateful. Respect the power and the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said to Bani Israel, Take what I have given you with strength and remember what is in it and adhere to what is in it. So that will lead you to taqwa. And this brings us to the son of Nuh. Got it right this time. <laughs> right? That he thought he was going to be able to seek refuge in the creation from the creator. His respect of Allah's power and his acceptance of Allah's signs was not in the proper place. And his, son, his father is trying to plead with him so that, you know, this would actually kick in. <laughs> that there is no escaping the qadr of Allah. There's no protection from the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no escape. Illa man rahim. And he's hoping for mercy for his son. Saying that except for those whom Allah ta'ala has spared. Right? And I want to pause here inshallah ta'ala. Because as the youth director, you can imagine that I've encountered many youth that show signs of this very same characteristic that we saw in the son of Nuh. Lacking the proper regard and respect for the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And an easy example of that is the Jumu'ah prayer. Oftentimes, if they come to the masjid for the Jumu'ah prayer, they're sitting while the khatib is giving the khutbah and they're on social media on their phone. Right? And I can't tell you the stories that I've even heard until this day. That they're not even looking at the halal on the phone in the house of Allah, but they're, they're actually looking at the haram. So where is the ta'zim? Where is the regard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And as parents, this is something that we have to play, pay close attention to. If we are concerned for our youth, if we are concerned for our children, right? Then we have to make sure and check to see where is their reverence of Allah. 
Where is their ta'zim, their respect for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his signs? Fearing the fate for our youth and our children of the son of Nuh. And if the son of a prophet can be, you know, wavering in his faith, then that should make us even more concerned. Because who are we compared to Nuh alayhi salam? And finally, the last verse, and we all should know this verse, well, if we were to reveal this Quran upon a mountain, then you would have seen this mountain, the greatest physical object that is a symbol of strength and power. And this is why Allah is using it in these parables, right? To highlight his ability and his power Right, but also to highlight how we should respond before the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, if the Quran were to be re revealed upon a jabal, then you would have seen it crumble out of humility and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The proper respect of the power of Allah. And Allah says to the believers, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَأَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ He's calling us to have the same characteristic as the mountain, saying, is it not time for the believers, for their hearts, to have this khushu of the remembrance of Allah and that which he has sent down of the truth? And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us insight and a heightened appreciation for the beauty of his Quran. Say, Ameen. وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ And these are the parables that we, you know, strike for the people so that they can ponder. جزاكم الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك وأشهد أن لا إلا أنت وأستغفرك وأتوب إليك سلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته